Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be doing some portable generator wiring and that will entail adding a main shutoff to a main lug only sub panel. And the reason why we need to do that is we need to disconnect from the utility side before allowing the generator breaker to be connected to the bus bar. So once that service disconnect is off, none of the wires in this enclosure are live. Those are my main, what we call feeders, okay? They're no longer service entrance conductors when you have a main disconnect uh, upstream from the panel here, which is what we have. So I'm gonna mark my conductors, the proper length to go into the main breaker here, because it's a little bit different than the main lugs. And I'll strip them back, and then I'll take the main breaker back out <clears throat> and put an antioxidant inside the terminals here on the table you'll see in a moment. The, the antioxidant prevents any oxidation from building up on those aluminum conductors. I'm about a half a mile, maybe less than a half a mile to, from the Atlantic Ocean. And so it's inside a garage. We want to prevent any kind of damage to the conductors we can. So that's why I prefer to use the antioxidant. It's not required, but it is a good idea to use them in my professional opinion. So here I'm uh, attaching the main breaker here to the enclosure. Now there's three lugs, two of them where the main lugs used to be, and one uh, in the middle there that attaches to the enclosure. Hey guys, I just want to show you something that's wrong with this panel. It was inspected, put in by a licensed electrician. This house is less than 10 years old. This is built after Hurricane Sandy. So that bonding screw should not be here, All right, This is not a main disconnect. This is just a disconnect for the panel. This main bonding jumper bonds the neutral wires and the ground wires. Ready? But as you can see, there's a four wire system here for the main lug. A hot, a neutral, another hot, and of course the equipment ground. So we're gonna fix this problem and we're gonna uh, eliminate this bonding jumper here and make this panel safe again. I was a little surprised to see that main bonding jumper in place when uh, when I started doing this work. I was not expecting that, and so that's just something I'm gonna check out and uh, remove anytime I see it. Um, it just leads to bad things when you have a bond between your current carrying neutral conductor and your non-current carrying equipment grounding conductor. So the jumper was removed and it was made safe. After making a half inch hole for my portable generator wiring feeder, um, I drill a pilot hole to the outside. Once I know where that location is on the outside, I'll come back with the appropriate size bit so that the connector in the back of the inlet box will not obstruct or make the box sit awkwardly. So that's what I'm doing here. Then I'll feed. This is 10-3 with the ground. These are my feeders for my portable generator wiring. As you'll see later, we'll terminate those um, for the generator. Here I'll be removing the knockout from the panel cover to fit this new breaker that we put in. This could take a little bit of time, so have some patience uh, so you don't make any mistakes or damage the panel. This is the listed mechanical interlock for this particular Square D home line electrical panel. I cannot stress enough how important it is to read the directions before installing this manual interlock. 
Now, I've, dozen, I've installed dozens of these before, and I always reread the directions just so I don't make any mistakes. The first thing you want to do is they'll give you a template. You want to make sure you line that up on the back of the panel, as instructions say. And then you want to use a 332nd drill bit, metal drill bit, maybe a cobalt, that's what I use, uh, to make your first holes. And then you make larger holes using a 3 16th metal drill bit. That's what the instructions will tell you. But the orientation of where to drill these holes, you, I highly recommend that you read the directions before you just jump right in there and do it. Once the nuts and bolts are in place, you want to fasten them down and make them as tight as possible. Now, these nuts and bolts are designed as to not be so tight that the interlock will not slide up and down. So make it snug so it doesn't fall off and you are good to go. Now this piece I'm installing here is required by the National Electric Code and comes with the manual interlock transfer kit. It needs to be mechanically fastened to the enclosure which locks that generator breaker in place so it doesn't inadvertently come out for any reason at all. This is a National Electric Code requirement and you must put this in. If you don't feel comfortable doing this work then I highly suggest you call a qualified licensed electrician to do this work. Uh, me personally, I like to do as much work as I can on this table rather than having it on the side of the house trying to get my knockouts out. So I'm just prepping this for the wiring that's going to enter this inlet and uh, I like to do it on the table whenever I can. So the first thing you want to do is you want to attach that four wire feeder into the back of the panel of this uh, inlet box. Um, also, I'm using a Milwaukee caulk gun, which mechanically moves that caulk to where you need it. Uh, it's a nice tool. It's a little expensive, um, but it works really well, and I love it. So I'm adding caulk to the back of this panel, uh, into that hole, so uh, air, water, whatever, doesn't get inside the house. And more importantly, doesn't get inside that panel uh, where rust and condensation can form. You definitely don't want to do that. So that's the purpose of the clock.
So if you're going to attach this inlet box, you're going to try to wire it yourself. The neutral wire goes opposite of the equipment grounding conductor. All right, it's marked W. Of course, that's got to be in the right place because when you go to plug that cord in later on from the generator, you want to make sure that you're feeding neutral current through the proper terminals. Uh, once the ground, the ground, it already comes grounded. The equipment ground is already terminated on this uh, inlet box. But re just remember that the neutral wire always goes opposite of the equipment grounding conductor. You'll have two remaining terminals to tighten down your conductors, and that'll be for your your uh, ungrounded red conductor and your ungrounded hot conductor. So pretty simple to wire, but just don't make that mistake of putting them in the wrong terminals. Hey, so that will conclude this video. Hope you learned something about portable generator wiring. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you're local to New Jersey Shore area or Monmouth County and you want to have this work done, please email me. My email is in the description or call. And uh, thanks for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.